Hello, it's Karmatos, and welcome to a special ladder special. Yep, uh, this was originally a Thameme deck that I have since tweaked and is now my go-to fun ladder climbing experience where I usually end every month here uh, somewhere between 3,500 and uh, 4,000, and it's usually just a function of time and effort. Whispers and Iron of Salt, Whispers of Iron and Salt is the deck. And it's Paturabo! And the original the meme of this deck was to try to get off Paturabo's Whisper uh, as consistently as possible. And there's been some light tweaks to the deck over time uh, since you've seen any videos of this one. And I just had a nice ladder 10 win spree with a final loss, so I thought I would share those with you. And I'll go over some of the tweaks that have uh, occurred with this deck, and you're going to see some pretty fun matches. So. Perturbo, of course, is the Whispers of Chaos that is procced by troops dying during your own turn and has the 2 energy siege, deal 6 damage. Very nice, and you can see it has a very nice low curve with very low on the high end. The th gimmick here is that most of this low curve produces additional troops to your hand, and the idea is to just keep a constant stream going while you're also firing off your 6 damage cannon as often as possible. Um, we got the Rakara squad. It's a delightful way to give yourself a turn of not taking a big hit, setting something up to be killed, also getting off almost a guaranteed um, 2 damage that synergizes well with the Whisper. It's just a great 2 play, especially on energy turn 4. Uh, superior firepower. Super important for taking out those uh, what what are those? The uh, two seven end of turn three damage artillery boats and some other troops and things that are got wacky curves on them. Uh, just one of the best destroys in the game, in my opinion. Uh, fifth support squad, super synergetic with all the front line that this deck has on the low curve, and it's one of the most important ways to take out enemy stealth units without having literal anti stealth. So comes in handy a lot. Alpha Row. It's just another nice low curve, get off 3 damage control, get off that Whisper, and I haven't seen it uh, needed to be changed. Fifth Breacher Squad. It's a nice uh, energy turn 3 play, and if they don't address it, you can keep using it to keep getting more to your hand, and that's going to let you keep up this low curve uh, bombardment. Ah yes, the Edemion Squad. Love this guy. 3 for a 3 4 is already great. The Siege, where you put 2 3 Olympian recruits into play, is nice because if they do not deal with this, you will be able to potentially, after a couple turns, self sustain 2 3s every turn. And we're going to see that probably at least once. So usually this thing gets a lot of hate, and they end up usually having to face bash or something to get that hate off. And it's worth its weight, absolutely. Ah, precision bombardment. 3 damage. Target dies, returns to your deck draw card. Excellent example of low curve, good damage. You can win games with this directly to the enemy, or just one of the best energy turn three options for blowing up that enemy Jubok or something and keeping your hand size big and sustained. Reno, another hand sustain, great low cost card. Three cost, at the end of your turn, draw an Astarte from your deck, and it's a win win with this guy because either um, you're going to guarantee you get one draw from it. And then if they don't deal with it, you can get off through damage and another draw from it. If they partially damage it, you can get off a Whisper. Usually they're going to try to kill this during their turn, and it's going to waste a lot of their good control when you've already gotten the value of 3 energy draw card, wasted enemy card. So, lots of good options. Goldstone Hunters, mandatory for the Whispers. It's one of the few troops that you can guarantee have die on your turn. Vorox, also pretty consistent to dying on your turn. Great for taking things out like Toads and Jubox and other such combos. And occasionally just dropping it and forcing the opponent to deal with it, otherwise they take 6 damage. Dominators. Love this guy. Um, extra synergetic with Poturabo, because when you drop this and then drop a Goldstone Hunter or a Vorox or etc. or your previously stealth troops, get off some attacks, suddenly your hand's gonna exponentiate. Super satisfying wins every time this guy goes off. Contrador is the most important Iron Warrior tactic. It is the game winner. You should always run this. It is not bad. If you think it's bad, you're probably bad. 
It's super amazing. You absolutely should try to use it at the very last moment possible. And if you have to use it sooner than victory, something is already wrong. So still good. Viral Bombs. This is one of my favorite ways to wreck stealth decks. <laughs> and in general, anything that's like ROM, spam, troop, or anything really, it's just a great way to, one, destroy a whole bunch of troops on your own turn, synergize as well with the Rokera squad with that, and even Alpha Row. Or, you know, there are times where you need that one extra troop to be able to die to clear the whole board, and it's just super satisfying. Now for the changes that were made to this deck, Rack and Ruin and Joker Company were added. Um, and that was, originally I had the four troop that when units attack and die during your turn, it gets a mark. It uh, turned out that, one, having to have your troops specifically die by attacking was extra tricky. And two, a couple things kept happening. One, stealth was still actually a pretty big problem, uh, especially warlords that gain stealth and things. So the Joker Company, and we're going to see it work, for exactly the purpose I added it for, to take those out. And the Rack and Ruin was added because I think a couple seasons ago I had three losses in a row that were all caused by uh, Mount Pharos. And I was just like, that's it, we're throwing in a Rack and Ruin. And the very next game, it did exactly what it needed to, which destroy the current uh, theme of having the pyramid in your deck. Or not the pyramid, sorry, the, uh, the mountain. So, and... It's also great when that occasional game you have against uh, Canis Vertex and you just want to instantly destroy one of their body parts and ruin their life. Ancient Horrend is super nice and mandatory. You're going to see this come into play every game very successfully. And then I used to have two prices of victory. That was because I used to not have Golg. Now I have Golg. He is my favorite big troop. Hands down favorite for energy 8 cost. You get a 2-3 front line, remove siege every single turn he's out, and he himself is perturbo. And if that 2-3 survives, you can remove the siege from this troop forever, and then you're just going to have 2 deal 6 every turn. And you can even attack with it if you need to, you know, if it wins you the game. Price of victory was the draw 3 cards, when a friendly troop dies, reduce this by 1. We're going to see this come in handy a lot, and it's surprising. But when you have all these low troops that generate more troops and such, the price of victory gets off pretty quick. And it's very useful in that long drawn out game where the opponent turns out to not have any troops, so you're not really getting to play off any of your control cards, and all your troops just keep dying, and this will help you outpace them. So, how did it do? Well, let's see, where did I start? I started at 2670, I think that's after that. Yeah, uh, 30, yep, that's the after score. So I started at 2643 and I had a nice 10 win spree and I finally lost against the second Corvax match. This one I went first, this one I went second. Going second against the Slow Warlord is really rough. So, this opening con match though. Yeah, too high, too high. I know it's Khan. I know he's not dropping anything for the longest time. So I want front lines and I want things that are better than control. Because I'm not going to get to control anything. Standard opener. For both of us. Which is him to hit me and for me to charge my laser. I'm going to fire off. No, we got the three curve. We're going to drop down the three. So now, uh, if he wants to, he can sneak attack it for two, and it looks like that's exactly what he's going to do. Um, let's generate another and then throw it down. Just stop him from getting off all that free hits. And I'm of the opinion that this is a warlord that you just have to hit in the face as hard and quickly and constant as possible. So... Oh, nothing with that other two energy. Standard con. Thinks he can win all on his own. Damn whisper. Or reckoning. So good. Yeah, yeah, that was a good turn for that. Ugh. Barely survives, but it's still gonna die. 
Alrighty, what are we gonna do for six? Charge and a breacher. There's the charge. There's the breacher. How many breaches I get out of that one breacher? That's the third. <laughs> At least he had to take two damage for it. <laughs> I actually, if he had Dow the previous turn, I might have dropped Dow on that turn, taken out the first two four. And then maybe board wipes. I don't know, trade-offs. Then, well, no, either way, it's six energy. The luck. Bastard. If he had had to sneak attack it, it would have lived, and I could have hit him for a good four. But it might also have changed what he played with his last three energy if it didn't hit it. Charge my laser. This is a misplay. I should have done Price of Victory before charging, just in case I drew something that just perfectly fit the slot. And I actually drop a Vorax, because again, I don't think I'm going to be able to hit anything with Vorax, and I want to max out that energy curve, and also it saves me four life. And look at this hand. Superior firepower. Viral bombs. Precision bombardment. Viral bombs. Superior firepower. That whole half of the hand has been useless. <laughs> this entire game. And I'm still able to play out max energy per turn. You know? Despite having this five cards of control, I'm somehow still able to do stuff. This is a place of honor. I bet it is. Yay, front line. Alrighty. We're gonna get out some extra front line. Matt, charge my laser and hit him for six. And with him, we'll have another front line, so he's gonna have to go through a lot of stuff in order to give this guy any trouble. Will he do it? Not this turn. Ooh, look at that six. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna try to keep him as survived as possible, so I'm not gonna do the face bash. And Whispers has not been going off this game at all. I have a hunch that everything he's gonna play is gonna be fast flank troops, all of which don't need a full rack and run. And I got multiple viral bombs and multiple support squads, so we're gonna use that direct damage. There is one flank. There's one fast. There's one flank. So there is going to be a misplay here, in my opinion. He uses the sneak attack to take that out, and then kills and does that. He could have switched the two. He could have taken the 3-2 into the 1-3, kept it alive, snuck attack, and then snuck attack, and he would have one extra troop here on the board. To be fair, though, that would also mean that he's about to take one extra damage, <laughs> because we win this turn. Count the math. That's 2 plus 5 is 7 damage. And we got 6 from the Warlord and 3 for 9. <laughs> and I could have done it with Precision Bombardment. I could have I had lots of options for that last 3 damage. Take that, you con bastard. Ah, oh, god. My new favorite warlord to hate. Angron? Ain't nothing compared to that con. Alright, we're gonna go back to back and verse a couple of colonels. Ancient friend in the opening hand? Yeah, I'll keep that. <laughs> Perfect pair of troop control? Yeah, I'll take that too. Mm hmm. Wow, I'm like, is he running a challenge deck? Maybe. Maybe. For low, and that's another low troop cost, but to be fair, everything plays out pretty nicely. And if I wipe them all, he'll keep getting random, so I'm unconvinced. I just, I might, I don't usually see challenge in a uh, ladder, so this might actually be his angle, and I like it because it was a very strong opener. 
Precision Bombardment doing just what it's meant to. He's closed that gap pretty good. Yep, nice standard energy turn four there. We do the uh, hit him, drop a troop, got the nice front line, be able to knock down a whisper stack, and we'll see face bashes into it. Ugh. Using up a three damage control on a one three. That's that's kind of rough. I'm not sure if I agree. Usually I prefer dropping the support squad when there's a front line, but I'll make an exception for 4 damage. And it's also going to force him to uh, bash into me. I think we're going to see a slight misplay here, if I recall. Yep, yep. He face bashed before Ogre. If he had done it after, Ogre would be a 6-7. Doesn't matter though, because it's going to die all the same. Goodbye, Ogre. What a power play. When Hrend gets off, it is one of the best cards in the game. Oof. I could rack and ruin it, but I'm actually not. I see a good chance to really put the pressure on. Really force him to do trades he doesn't want to. Random 4. Doesn't hit the friend. Doesn't hit me though, I would have rather it hit me. Damn! Look at that good luck. I took 9 damage for that. Do I have lethal? Not quite. If I had one more energy, I think I would have had lethal. But what we're gonna shoot for is we're gonna... Yeah, minimize the chance that he can do 18 damage to me in one turn. It's pretty unlikely for a neutral deck. Um, like, he could bombardment and then hit me for 9, but that's not enough to win the game. He is going to drop that big fatty. Of course, it's uh, not going to matter, because I got 6 and 2, or 6 and 4. But for the giggle of it, I like finishing with viral bombs. Good attempt. And then, a warlord I don't see generally shows up twice in a row with two different players. <laughs> I really wasn't expecting that. Yeah, I mix out the viral bomb. Open fire. Up and for some better energy turn four options. That looks familiar. Don't actually go with that just yet. It's bad for the curve to not power up. Only if you absolutely have to face punch like militia or something. And I think there'll be a game where you see me not charge up on the first turn. And right now, my thought is, okay, don't attack with it. Deny your, you know, card get, and we'll just stare at each other. I'm fine with that. I'm like, okay, now he's going to hit me. Now? Okay, keep it up, buddy. Or I'll drop a two and hit for six. And then we'll have a nice Dominator three bash and get these guys all buffed. Hmm. Well, at least it soaked 4 damage for 2 energy. I can look at that. I might superior firepower that away. Yeah, and then charge up. Seems like as good a target as any. Maybe I should have held onto it? Mmm. Wow, I was like, ah, oh, give it frontline, give it frontline. What do I do here? I took a lot of time thinking on that turn, and I actually did that. Hindsight, I should not have bashed into him. But, 
I just take an extra damage for my trouble. That I'll be able to horrend away, but I can't horrend and shoot, so I have to pick. There's the eight. That was pretty punishing. So I think I'm gonna bomb that for the remainder. And I could have taken it out instantly and avoided the eight damage, but then I would have had no board presence and... and I'm happy with this outcome. Well, that's actually pretty uh, steep. That's also pretty steep. <laughs> Yeah. Can't kill it, can ya? Okay, what do we do here? Uh, we actually go Dominators. Bash into that. Then I think we throw down... Oh yeah, I take the face damage. We throw down a little more frontline. So he's able to take that one out. He'll throw the 3-6 into the 1-3 eventually. Then he'll send the 6-4 into the 5-5. Five, five. Now I wish I had kept my uh, destroy 3 or less attack, but I'm gonna run that one. It's not enough though. This is all too close for comfort. So what do we do about this? I'm actually, that's right, I'm reluctant to use friend because he has destroy structures and vehicles damaged by this troop. So we get off a very good rack and ruin. And then we're actually gonna drop that fellow. And luck has it, takes out the stealth. Oof. I mean, anything would have been okay. If it had hit this troop, then he would have been safe himself, relatively. If it had hit one of those two, then I'd be able to take it out with a face bash on the following turn. There's options. I'm like, ah, he didn't give it frontline. That's what he does, right? Yep. Things are not looking so hot, are they? What do you do? Okay. I can apply six there. I can superior firepower the 2-5. And we're gonna hold on to the friend. I don't need it taking a pair of sneak attack hits and not getting off its destroy. He's thinking I'm gonna protect those two, and sadly friend is only gonna go off on that. There were much better targets before, but it's gonna work. It's gonna work out. Ooh. The perfect, perfect draw. Goodbye. Goodbye. You finally get your bonus draw. What are you gonna do with it? That's fat. That's fat. He maybe should have gone for the 3-1 with his face. Because I'm going to punch into that regardless. You could have given it plus one, plus one. And... Yeah, giving it front line was... Not the optimal call. So after seeing that, it changes what I do this turn. I'm like, woof, my health is at eight. I would love to get off this direct six, but I'm just gonna have to pop this sooner than later. The last thing I need is I orbital bombardment or something, and I instantly lose. But I'll hit him for the three after. Got my nice 8-8 eight, eight random attack. Okay. Potentially a mistake. If he had not given it frontline, then this could have hit that instead, necessarily. And that could have built up even bigger. It's 
sometimes just because you can use your power doesn't mean you should. And yeah, I'm charging up for more. At this point, I want to get every turn. <laughs> yeah, that was expected. And I was debating what to do here. I actually just go for the guaranteed KO, and then I can leave him there for a potential 6 plus 3 for finisher. Let's see if it works out. That's a 7-8. That makes him an 8 8, and now he can give it front line. He will kill my 8 8. But that Vorox and the bombardment, or my face, is just enough. Ta da! Ooh, whispers purdy. <laughs> All right, who we got next? Ah, we got a Thiel. Remember when Thiels ran wild? They're a rare breed now. Are they Take still the, the best him. of Ultramarines? Eh, probably. But yeah, taking that hero power up to two energy, but keeping the passive one resistance really changed the name of the game, because what would have happened otherwise is he would have hit me and then stunned me on turn one, and then I'd have no charge, and everything would be off by a whole two turns, and I would have lost. At least that was my old experience. Yeah, give me the good stuff. Okay. See? I got a card, and I took out a troop. I call that a win. And six damage. Ooh, superior firepower. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> Alternatively, I could have hit it for two and then three. But superior firepower is a little more niche to get off, so I thought it was definitely worth applying there. This, on the other hand, I can use after I deal six to something and then finish it off for three. Much more consistent late game. Mm. I could Vorax it, leave it there as a 3-1, and then... Oh, no, nope, he bounces that away. Which is clever. That'll give him some extra heals. Uh, let's hit him and drop a squad. I was debating just dropping Vorax, but I think I go for the... Uh, make him hate it. And I want to try to use Voraxes to get off Whispers. Uh-huh. Mm. Okay. What do I do about it? I could Viral Bombs. And I do. <laughs> That's five damage to both of us, clears his board, gets me one towards Whispers. Look at that. Uh, sorry buddy, I have Contrador Warlord power. That's game. <sighs> oh. 31 HP. Rough. Alrighty. The uh, Argol. And remember, when you see Argol, it's really Rom. I think this was a really close one. Take the iron within. He was on a runaway train. Yeah, if I didn't go second, I could pop superior firepower. I'm willing to let him get off one. It's time you know, for whatever. Decimation. Just let's think about it. He could get stealth, and then that would be awful. He could get plus attack, and then I would probably precision bombard it anyway. He could get sneak attack, and I don't care. He could get poison, and I don't care. So, I'm just gonna have to take that two damage. So that way I have my charge. And 
Yeah, I actually still go with the uh, Precision Bombardment anyway, just to get the additional card cycle with the three slot. If I had had Rhino, I would have dropped Rhino and face bashed. I love Vorox. I love it so much <laughs> for moments just like this. That's a nice four turn energy play. It'd be a shame if I completely cleared it and got a contribution towards my whispers. Be a real shame. Perfect. Hmm. That's not three. There's nothing else to viral bomb with it. I'm actually gonna have to drop six damage on it. But to be fair, that's what it's for. I spent two energy on an earlier turn and two energy this turn to deny five energy. So. It would have been more satisfying if it had six health, but that's, that's what it does. I was like, yeah, viral bomb coming up, and then. Uh, I think I took a long time on this upcoming turn because. In hindsight, maybe what I should have done is I should have face bashed it for four and then dropped my two threes. But I actually go with the viral bomb. So that way we both take three instead of me just taking four. Mm hmm. I think it's time for another viral bomb. I think we're going to drop a squad and my other viral. That gives me just enough Viral Bomb strength to take out the 3 and the 4 without having to face bash myself. It also contributes 2 towards my Whispers, and doesn't give him anything to heal off of. Things are looking pretty tight though. Really tight. But he's not going to go for it, and uh, good he didn't, because I might have been able to win, depending on what I drew. I could hit him for 7 and 2. You know, too risky. That's standard. What you gonna do with this guy? I was really worried he was gonna double go for me, and then I'd be down to 4, and then he'd just hit me with, you know, 4 damage. Okay, we got that off. But I hate to break it to you. I have lethal. I have lethal in more than one way. And Rack and Ruin for the finish. I also could have done 3 and 2. Yeah, that would have been my alternative. But just enough for that. Ah, love beating up Roms. Here's a Ferris. Viral and Bombs. I like your hammer. Save your breath and fight, traitor. You will accept true order. Don't I? No? Hmm. I thought I had. Precision bombardment. Do your magic. Keep that hand nice and big. Up. Yes, I will superior firepower that. <laughs> if I play anything else, it's just going to get bigger before I can. And I hit him for six. Nice top deck. Nice top deck. That was a very awkward play for you, buddy. There was nothing better you could have done. Oh yeah, well. Keep that Warlord power low curve dropping. Sure glad I didn't play Dominators. <laughs>
I could do it again. Hit him for six, drop another. Oh no, now we go for Dominator just because I have Goldstone Hunters in hand. And I'm hoping to get one, two, three things buffed. Oof. Oh, viral bombs. If only I had timed this total damage better. That would have been the greatest viral bombs of all time. I can't let that live long. I just, I don't like the idea of him getting a Kalth infantry every end of turn. Are you kidding me? So we're going to go with that. God, I wish I had had the energy for viral bombs. That would have been so fun. But we still got a plus one to everything in hand. And we took that tower out. And we got a chaos drop. And okay. He's used both. So. And I was really hoping he'd leave them for control purposes. But he's guaranteeing that he gets off his uh, reckoning count. If I were him, though, I might have left them there. Um, just to you know, deter whatever I play. And it definitely causes a very different play on my behalf, because now I can drop <laughs> quite the field, and he just has to take it. And again, try to put your weakest in the middle. Or your stealth, or your ward in the middle. At least that's what I found to be most successful. Well, now he's healing, so time to throw down even more aggro. Yeah, that's right, the Vorax without a target. Does he have the hammer? He does. I believe he has the hammer. So I maybe played a little bit into that. I could have just rack and ruined him and saved a couple of the troops. Probably should have seen that coming. But my hand size has sustained large. Ah! That's important. <laughs> that's very important. I can still... I can keep it up. I can keep dropping. And I still got a support squad. That's a nice six. No longer is it bounceable. Probably the worst part about that poor Joker company getting nerfed. Ooh. And I was so tempted to viral bomb this turn. Look, look at this. But then I wouldn't get off this damage, and I drew friend, and I did a little math. And it was better to get off the guaranteed friend while it was useful. That was an easy trade. I could get rid of the 2-3, and I could face bash off the 1-2. Ah, what I do there is I hit him for six and drop the two. The alternative was I could have precision bombarded over here and face bashed, which in hindsight probably would have been better. But I did what I did because I have Contrador, and I do still have viral bombs, so I don't need to full clear his board. I can let him keep that false sense of security and do a big damage wipe here on energy turn 10. Betrayal. So, you know, I think I actually I have lethal this upcoming turn. He's gonna punch that in the face, right? <laughs> really? No. Okay. So let's do a little math. I take that out. I hit him for 3, 8, 14. So that takes him down to 10. Then I can drop viral bombs for a net uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, plus 2 is 6. And then that for 7, 13. That's game. I also could have just done Rack and Ruin and Contrador. I there's options. Always more fun though to and I think I do, do Rack and Ruin. I don't even want to give him the satisfaction of blaming it on Contrador. <laughs> so create that nice feeling of oh he had just enough to kill me. Well, I, I might have had a little more. All right, you ready for a little bot abuse? <laughs> At least one of these two is a particularly fun bot abuse. I usually skip these, but uh, let's enjoy. Take the iron within. And it's near I the end of the video, so unfair. if you're sticking around this long, you probably want to see it all anyway. 
thank goodness for superior power power. This is the one time I am not going to opening charge. I do not want that steamrolling. Period. I don't need a bunch of stealthies and plus six attack. No, no. Rhino. Keep that man size big. Especially because you lose one with Whisper. <coughs> Hit me for five. Yep, yep. Well, I have a choice here. I have a choice for... Suiciding. I want the extra draw. We can rem is 3-1 into my 1-3, I don't care. Turns out that's not how things go. Wipes the whole board, hits me for two, and then hits me for another five. This bot is actually giving me a lot of trouble right now. Uh, it's seven up on me on health, but it has no board. So I'm actually not doing the fire alternating because I keep thinking a tank is going to get dropped and I'm going to need to blow it up. So I'm holding off for the control. And this is a turn where I can do that. I can hit one like that, drop six damage over there, then I can drop alpha and the support squad. And the 5th support squad behind a front line is a nice, nice combo. I got a... and goodbye 2-2. Two, two. Never mind. Well, that's gonna die to 3-1. That's why I run it. It's a whisper charge, it's a 3 damage for 2. And it gets taken out occasionally by the board wipes and... But, synergizing nicely with my own uh, viral bombs lets me pick that over just taking the 2-3 to three damage to a troop. Ah, these bots. Ah, I don't want perfection on any of these. Let me do my power last. Let me see my option last and then drop a bunch of generic twos. What are you thinking? I do think I ultimately made a mistake here. I hit him for three instead of hitting that. And I didn't even face punch it either. Because you know what happens? He's in a buffet. Rookie mistake on my behalf. He didn't buff it very well, but now it's just ever so slightly, so hindsight folks, take out uh, Emperor's Children troops before they buff. But it does get me a Whisper Charge. So, and that gets me a Whisper Charge. So maybe I had a master plan all along. <laughs> Uh, bot abuse. So, you know, it's a bot match. I'm going to have a little fun. I'm going to suicide everything except one, drop my whispers, and then charge my 8 8 for another one rapidly. Woo! Bot abuse. Bots, they are the worst. Why don't you just program it to do the opposite? Like, at least if Fulgrim, perfection second. And I can finish him. But I do love my fire bombs. Oh. 
Ta-da! And there's that. Now this next bot abuse is extra spicy. It's a spicy meat ball. Take the iron within. Remember, these are all ladder matches, so. And some of these ladder bots can be uh I I have lost to the Elrond bot from time to time. You know, these guys are not necessarily pushovers. I do think it's funny that they built a front line deck for him. Um, well, it kind of makes sense. Low health, want to get out the 3 damage constant. Setting it up for Vorax. So now I can hit that and then hit whatever else he drops. Like that. Take that out. Warlord Face Bash, and use the charge up. Got me lower. Rude. Just rude. Dominators. No? I am shocked. Well, okay. I mean, I could have Dominators face bashed and face bashed, and all that would have been buffed, and I'd have a 5 5, but this takes that out. It's that set up. Again, everything here is going to be deliciously great, so. What are we going to do about this? Charging. I am. Yeah. That was actually the best thing I could do, I guess. Fun, right? <laughs> That's two potential Dominator pulls about to happen. And now I can take that out with a troop. And, yeah, we got lots of... We're gonna go Dominator. And take that out. Pop out two troops. So let's keep count on the Goldstone Hunter. I hope you're ready for some uh, spicy memes. Ugh. What you gonna ram with that 3 2? another. Did I misplay? Should I have dropped my dominators beforehand? Ah well. I got a little distracted there. And for the <laughs> giggles, let's just get that goldstone hunter nice and big. <laughs> oh, and my whispers is down to six. I could have whispered first. Ah! Whatever, man. It's a bot. <laughs> Alrighty, let's get back to some real fun. We got a stealthy, and then a back to back Diamonds of the Rune Storm. Take the iron within. It gives me no pleasure to do this. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm fifth supporting squatting that right now. That is not gonna live. I don't care how it messes up my curve. I'm getting that dead while it's guaranteed to die. <laughs> it's one of the better <laughs> voice uh, dudes. 
a rhino and a face bash? No, 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 okay, okay. We're actually gonna go with the, uh, the wall there and six damage. It's better energy curve. And I can still set up for Vorox, like I can take out both of those. And yeah, you can drop my wall down by one, or two, one. Yeah, Vorox away. It's her time to shine, baby. When I started this game, Vorox was a 3-4. <laughs> that was so OP. It was in every single deck. Now it's kind of an odd pick, but I love it. See, missed opportunities. I would actually sometimes take that oppor you know, that moment to ram it into the 1-1, one -one, just so that way it sticks around as another 3 damage source that I have to deal with. Borax, you're a champ! Another Whisper Charge. I think this might be a Whispers game. I'm already down to 12. Mm-hmm. Let's drop a pair of threes. Front line so I don't take seven. And card draw. Yep, that's, that is just what I should do. Mm. Yeah, okay. Okay. That's kind of rough. Uh, what are we going to do about it? Yeah, we're going to apply 6 damage there. Take that out. I can suicide into that, getting me one step closer to Whispers. Which is now guaranteed with Goldstone Hunters, so... Ah, I gotta bounce that back. That's okay. I, it only increases its cost for one turn, and I don't have a lot else going on anyway, so... Mm-hmm. That's a good superior firepower target. I could wait for, like, the 2-7 artillery boat, but... Use it while it's useful. For all I know, everything else he's gonna play is gonna be stealth. Yeah, I wasn't gonna do anything with that extra 2 energy anyway. Boom! Whispers. Which I would prefer to not have to... Yeah, I'm gonna take that out for six, I'm pretty sure. Okay. We have options. Nuke bat for six. I think I took a while to decide, but I ultimately Goldstone Hunter into the 2-2 and draw a Joker company for the uh, Warlord damage. Because between uh, the Whispers, Contrador, Viral Bombs, I'll have enough options to... I don't need to directly hit him for three, I don't think. That'll discourage that. On me? Can he do 15? Well, we know he doesn't, but... Okay. I'm actually a little worried. If he has a way to deal random damage, no, I live. And he dies. I could have, you know, whispered in a sort of way, but I need to. couldn't win with whispers this game. But, good game. Nice and tight. Contrador for the win. All right, I love using Purdy versus this fellow in general, especially back when it was uh, auto poison because then they didn't have a choice. And me going first is super important for this right here. I get to do precision bombardment on their turn one drop, and that's exactly why I lose the other game because I can't. And everything's just one turn behind. And there, there's another solution for something of that variety. 
So I think I actually go squad and hit him for six. I'm happy for him to suck on that maintenance for a couple turns. Could I have Goldstone Hunter dipped? Yeah, but now he gets the Ramus 5-3 into here and... He's not gonna poison a 2-1. He is actually going to destroy it, which to be fair protects his 5-2. <laughs> Hmm, let's get off some good pricing. So I'm really worried the heal's gonna go there. <sighs> Thankfully I luck out, and he's still down to energy. Well, that's gonna die. <laughs> we can hit it, we can nuke him, we can drop it. Have options. But we're gonna go Dominators, absolutely. Because... We get off a whisper charge, we get off one, two, three bonus. And we get a price of victory reduction. Every single thing <laughs> just got benefited by that play. I will superior firepower one of those away, absolutely. And then you know, in hindsight, I could have dropped the 4-3 into it, and that would have in turn buffed everything again. But... I hold on to it. Let's see how that plays out. Would it have been better to... It might have been better, because then I could have hit that for 6. Hmm, trade-offs, trade-offs. Uh, gotta give off one buffing. Lucky. I was really worried it was going to get him. <laughs> the 5-5 five, five tank. Oh boy. He is not in a good place. I'm getting continued card draw. I have a 3 draw coming up. I have a whispers coming up. Mm. Sadly your copy is uh, just going to die. Do I have lethal? I believe... I do. I do now. Absolutely. That's five. That's five. And then I can Contrador Goldstone. Actually, I had lethal without Contrador. I just had six and two right there. <laughs> I had six on power. Uh, so many options. We'll never know what those extra four cards were. What a smackdown. And time, finally, for the loss. After eight human victories, two bot victories, going second versus a low warlord. Makes me you can enjoy the pain with me. I try. I really try. I try real hard. And I'm gonna charge up because, you know, I could face bash and something, but it just seems like the better play. And I wish I had face bashed. Because now there's two. <laughs> and I see I have Vorax, so... What I'm going to go for is... I'm actually going to bombard that. Get off my draw. And then face bash into the 1-4 with the hope that I can do it again next turn. Or that I can hit it for 6, or... That I can Vorax those two targets if it gets plus 1. It, lots of options, right? Unless that happens. Let's just denied my ability to do that. But I will still Vorax into the 4-3. I got two, so. I think it's me a Whisper. Pick that down again, so that way I can still try to Vorax it. Uh, it was supposed to be seven, and you just dropped it for, what, four? <laughs> I can hit him. And I can drop a front line to deny taking that damage. 
And it's still there and it's still living. I haven't been able to frickin' hit it. I think he's actually gonna start face bashing me. Pretty surprising. What else does he do with his energy? I would have buffed him again. Oh, because he does that. Yeah, that's that's frickin' rough. Alright, we can Vorox those two off the board. Except it's already done all the damage it's gonna do. And if I had just gone first, I would have been able to bombard the first one before it got off, and then when he played the second one, I would have been able to Vorox it, and we would be done. This game would have been an easy landslide win. And that... You know, if I didn't vote this to be amazing in my last survey, this is amazing. This is actually one of the best uh, legendaries I've ever seen. Of course, if it didn't have ward, I'd be able to take it out, but I still wouldn't be able to do that, so this damage is going to have to go there. I mean, nothing can go wrong here, right? That's lethal. That's super lethal. Well executed. That's <laughs> cleave. That's more cleave. Missed opportunity. He should have face bashed and then done it. Well, there we go. Can't win them all. But that was a nice 10 win spree. I'm going to probably pull off a few more like that before I get to my end of month 4K goal that I usually shoot for. It's just, life is busy. I got a lot of work. I've been doing programming. I have some fun programming projects I'll share soon that involve, uh, what do they call that? What do they call that? Dark something. Anyway. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. If you like this, like it. If you want to see more like it, subscribe. Share this with your friends. Drop some comments. Let me know if there's some competitive tweaks I can make to this deck. Uh, I feel like it handles a lot of situations very well. It can be hard aggro, it can be long stall, it can do everything in between. I feel like it's a very nicely universal, like, not 100% aggro. Not it, it can adapt to the situation as needed. But if there's some important powerful cards that I've missed, maybe our new 1-2 legendary with the random generating, or... I don't know. Maybe there's some new cards I just haven't thought to put in. Let me know. Uh, this was Comertos. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next time.